Hello and welcome to this episode of IPcast, a podcast on IP-related matters by Starks, a niche law firm specializing in intellectual property law and international trade law. My name is Maria baitsova Wenans, and I'll be your host today. In this episode, let's discuss a curious question related to the fascinating field of art law. What if Leonardo da Vinci had destroyed his Mona Lisa? In particular, I would like to sketch some legal and philosophical issues around destroying works of art. Let's go! Well, to the best of my knowledge, Leonardo da Vinci never actually attempted to destroy his masterpiece. But imagine for a moment the damage to the world's cultural heritage. Quite tangible, right? Does it mean that an artist cannot freely destroy her own artwork? There's indeed an argument that once created artworks no longer belong to the artist, and thus she has no moral right to destroy them. The analogy drawn here is a child, not ours to destroy once we gave her life. Nonetheless, art history knows of many examples of, let's call it, reputation-preserving destruction. Giorgio O'Keefe, Claude Monet, even Michelangelo, his sculpture deposition, though preserved, bears the traces of the famous artist's furious hits of the hammer. But the rights of the artist, that's just one angle. What about the owners? Be it the owner of an artwork or the owner of, say, a building on which a street art artwork is made. Do they have the right to destroy it? Issues are numerous. To begin unfolding this matter, one might start with the obvious questions. What is being destroyed and by whom? Is it an artist destroying her own legacy or is it the owner of a particular artwork who decides to destroy it? If it is an artist herself, as already mentioned, there is a dilemma of uh, her reputation versus keeping the body of works intact for history. One line of thought is that artworks created instantly enter into the flow of art history, belonging to all of us. While taking them out of this flow would mean ripping us all of the cultural heritage in a way. Then again, what if an artist considers her work to be not good enough to stay and bear her name? Like, for example, the Belgian painter Luc Thurmans, who constantly purges his portfolio, destroying every artwork he believes not to be good enough to go to his dealer. It would be unfair to deny an artist the right to define such personal legacy. In tune with this thought in his book Playing Darts with a Rembrandt, Joseph Sachs grants an artist the right to destroy her creation, reasoning that an artist should be entitled to decide how the world will remember him or her. Seems logical. But then again, for example, Franz Kafka wanted all his unpublished works to be destroyed upon his death. If his will had been duly executed, we would not remember Kafka as an author of such masterpieces as The Trial or The Castle. Luckily, his will was not honored. Moving on to the owner of an artwork. Does the physical ownership grant the ultimate universal right to do whatever an owner deems appropriate? Or is an owner bound by certain moral obligations towards an artist and public at large? If it is about ownership of a masterpiece of a historical value, can a single person ever decide its fate? On the other hand, who decides on historical value? James O. Young, in his essay Destroying Works of Art for Journal of Aesthetics and Art Criticism, concludes that, quote, No matter how bad some work is, it possesses historical interest. Thus, even when the value is dubious, there is still room for interest. Making a case against destroying even objectively or better subjectively bad artworks. Young elaborates even further, stating that, quote again, the single individual is never the sole cause or creator of an artwork. The individual artist is simply the last stage in a causal chain which has included many other artists. Therefore, it is always about the general historical context, about the cultural heritage and interest of the public at large, or isn't it? You might have heard about the destruction of artworks in the context of um, the sales of NFTs. For instance, Daystorm, an art collective that owned the mixed media uh, work Free Comb with Pagoda by Jean-Michel Basquiat, They announced that they would be making a non-fungible token of this work and that the NFT would transfer not only the ownership of the digital file, but the new owner would be given the choice to destroy the original work if they so desired. 
destroy the original work by Basquiat. Keeping the NFT, which is essentially a certified receipt? Well, this Basquiat, let's call it controversy, is just one of the latest examples of the difficult interaction between copyright and NFTs. In late February 2021, the blockchain firm Injective Protocol bought a copy of a work by Banksy, burned it and turned the act of burning into an NFT. Injective Protocol might claim that this burning event is an expression of art itself, but the bottom line is that the Banksy's work is gone, destroyed. Yes, by the legal owner of that particular piece, but still destroyed. If someone buys a table, even a very nice antique table made by a famous craftsman, and smashes it into pieces with an axe, that would normally not cause problems or questions. However, somehow with art that feels different. I heard an argument that uh, cultural heritage would not suffer much if one Basquiat or Banksy's works are destroyed. First of all, that's highly arguable, and second, okay, you don't like Basquiat, but what about an art collector who bought, for example, a painting of uh, Renoir? Can he burn it? Throw darts at it? A curious twist. What if the owner destroys an artwork with the consent of the artist? Robert Rauschenberg erased the drawing by Willem de Kooning, creating the Erase de Kooning drawing of 1953. Now it is in the collection of San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. De Kooning gave it to Rauschenberg, knowing what the latter was planning to do, and even though not really approving the intent, but also not preventing the experiment. Would it be any different if Rauschenberg would have bought the Kooning drawing and proceeded with deleting it without prior informing the artist? In the Roman law, which is the basis for the majority of modern laws, property rights were denoted as jus utendi fruendi abutendi, which means the right to use the object, benefit from the income it generates, and to completely consume or destroy the owned object. Likewise, in the earlier editions of uh, Black's Law Dictionary, prior to the 7th edition of 1999, the property right explicitly contained the right to destroy. Not anymore. This most extreme feature of property ownership has been scratched from the definition. Truth must be told, this refers to the general property rights, not the particular case of artwork ownership. Already mentioned, Joseph Sachs contends that an art collector never actually owns an artwork but rather, quote, she is the work's steward and ought to incur permanent legal obligations to preserve it and make it accessible to scholars, art lovers, and members of the general public. Now, literally taking this statement, in my view, is an exaggeration, but I tend to agree with its spirit. Culture is, in a sense, what makes us human, and cultural heritage has a universal value for everyone, and each of us in particular. Owning an art object and getting profit out of transactions with it is one thing, However, I do believe in the higher value of the pure existence of an object for the public at large. Now some final considerations. A separate category of artworks is temporary works, that at the very outset are created to be one day destroyed. Here, for example, The Dollhouse by Heather Benning, which was subsequently burned down. Ice sculptures made to last for a number of days, or a burning man in the Nevada desert, annually celebrating self-expression and then disappearing in a week. But, and here of course there's also a but, the Eiffel Tower was once also created as a temporary industrial object to be dismantled after the 1889 World Expo. Would it be appropriate to still do it now? And if not, when exactly did that right to destroy expire? An interesting case likewise prompting discussion is accidental destruction. A notable example of that is the destruction of Elias Garcia Martinez's fresco painting of Jesus Christ, and most importantly, a dreadful restoration which followed. The resulting, let's call it modern art, Ese Mono by Cecilia Jimenez, in the end attracted myriads of tourists to the local church in Borgia in Spain, and brought attention and money which would not be there otherwise. The question is, what is more valuable now, the restoration or the original painting? Would it be appropriate and would it be beneficial for the general public to destroy the restoration by Jimenez and try to recover the original painting by Garcia Martinez? Or the historical value of the existing restoration now is much higher than that of the original artwork? How to define such a value? 
The end of 2018 brought into the spotlight also another type of art destruction. Creation by destruction. You might know the Love is in the Bin by Banksy, the balloon girl shredded by Banksy during the auction at Sotheby's. This highlight of 2018 has been analyzed from all sides, but in the context of creation by destruction, it is a bit like artists using their old canvases to create new paintings. Here as well, from the art historical standpoint, do artists have the right to destroy if they're creating by or through destruction? Should they be obliged to keep the initial original and alter the copy? Should they preserve the initial work in some other way? Also, these questions are not answered. To conclude, there is actually no conclusion. There are only numerous discussion prompts. The very concept of ownership in connection with art objects is an issue which invites a discussion around many facets of value. Amongst others, an absolute value of the cultural heritage and an obligation to prevent its destruction. Should only the rights of an owner be restricted to ensure that there is no or only limited right to destroy? Or should an artist also be prevented from destroying her own works, thus ripping society of its cultural heritage? How to define the scope of the right to destroy? Yet even more, how to define the scope of the cultural heritage as such, and historically valuable or should it better be historically interesting pieces worth protection from destruction? What are your thoughts on the matter? Please share them in the comment section or send us an email at info at starks.be. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. If you liked this episode, please press that sweet heart button and do share it with your colleagues and friends. Till next time at IPcast by Starks. Starks, your sustainable growth supporter.